Hello there, this is Tamil, and I use Clip Studio Paint a lot, and there are a few features that just keep bringing me back to Clip Studio Paint over any other program, and that includes customizable brushes, and the fact that there's a marketplace, you can get 3D models and poses, but I think my favorite part of Clip Studio Paint is the fact that you can customize it to be in any way, shape, or form to serve your artistic goals. For example, if you want to have as few buttons as possible, you can arrange that. If you like to use everything manually, you don't like any shortcuts, and you just want to use the iPad version or tablet version, that also works. And so today, I just wanted to share a few of a really cool tricks and tips that I learned over pretty much seven years of using Clip Studio Paints and hopefully share it with you so that you can customize and get better at your own art. And let's just get started. So here we are in Clip Studio Paint and I have this harpy character I painted uh, billions of years ago just as a placeholder. There's gonna be a bunch of buttons and a bunch of windows. And if this is your first time, that's totally okay because I will go over this like as basic as possible. If you go to window, these are going to be all of the windows of the tabs that are going to be placed here. So if you see sub tool, you're going to see sub tool right here. So if you want to hide it or show again, you're going to find it in the window section. And the next thing I want you to look at is go into workspace. If you click here, you're going to see a bunch of buttons here. And this is kind of like a, a folder within like entire Clip Studio Paint. Like this is kind of a reset button for you. So if you go into here and you click reset to default and you say, okay, it's gonna reset everything um, as basic as possible, as normal as possible. So if you messed up everything, you lost everything, everything looks weird. This is the button that you can go into and just click on that. And the main presets is uh, workspace, illustration, comic, and by category. And for the most part, honestly, I usually just use illustration or workspace. But let's just start with uh, illustration. And if you go back to workspace, you're going to see a reload illustration that is different from reset to default because reset to default is going to give you the most basic layout. But reload illustration is uh, going to include shortcuts, command bar, preferences, all of that good stuff that you can save later. I'll show you how. Uh, but if you click on it, you can see that everything changed. And that is because that is how the illustration looks like by default. And there are going to be many things that are not going to be up to my taste because I'm just used to a different workflow. For example, if you go into tool, you can see there's going to be transform, lasso and all that good stuff. But I am so used to having that as a line instead of like a little square. So we can go ahead and fix that. So if you just hold uh, the tool palette and if you really want, you can just have it floating in your canvas, like around <laughs> your drawing. But personally, I'll just have it on the left side. I will go ahead and dock it all the way to the left. And once it turns red, that is when you can let go. And it still wanted to preserve that rectangular feel. And that is why I'm gonna go ahead, uh, find this line in between and just push it all the way down. And as you can see, everything is lined up perfectly to the left. And that is how I personally like to use it. Because also, I'm a right-handed person. Uh, everything is going to be on the left. I can just click buttons over here and paint or draw with my right hand. But at the same time, I like to have my colors and everything else on the right side. So let's go ahead and push the color all the way to the right. I will let go over here. And so I have the color here. The second most important is obviously layer. So I want to push layer to the bottom of this so that they kind of stack together. So I can move my layer up and down and this entire palette left and right. It's a little bit confusing, but honestly, once you get used to it, uh, it's pretty intuitive. So in here, I'm gonna do this. Also, I like to use the triangle for my colors because it has three points instead of four, which is a little bit easier. And there are some things that are left over, for example, color set. I don't really need that and I don't use it. So that's why I'm going to grab it 
and there's going to be a little X mark. You click on that and it deletes it. Same for color slider and color mixing. And if you ever want to bring this up again, obviously you can go into window and this whole section is for color. This whole section is for layer. So if there's anything that you're looking for, most likely uh, you're going to find it in the window section. And I'll just keep dragging things that I really want to keep and use. So layer property, I can just stack it over here with my layer. So anytime I want to go back to it, I just click here and it's going to toggle between the two. And basically what you want to do is focus on things that you use the most, then secondary, then third, like whatever secondary, you can hide it within those palettes. And as an example, you can go in here and there's going to be a bunch of uh, materials. Let's say there's cross hatching effects, backgrounds, 3D stuff. I don't really need this. So I'll click this double arrow right here and it's going to hide it a little bit. And at the bottom, you can see that illustration also gave us timeline for animation. So I don't really need that. And basically what I'm really, really uh, trying to focus on is just save myself space because I know iPads are big but they're not that big because uh, Clip Studio Paint was created for computers and I feel like um, iPads are a little bit too small so I'll uh, show you little uh, tricks and tips on how to save that space. Another way to save yourself time and clicks and space is going to be quick access. And honestly, this deserves a whole separate video and I hope that I will make it one day. But if you've never used quick access, it's just amazing. And um, you basically can save pretty much anything in here. You like a brush, go ahead. You can just go ahead and drag it and it's going to be a calligraphy pen in there. You like copy or delete or cut, it's going to be right there. Uh, the transform, flip horizontal, pretty much any button that you can think of can be saved in here. And um, there are different ways you can show this and display if you click the little three uh, lines to the top left, you can see tile column, you can make a small list. So whatever you want to condense it to, you can do it and save yourself space and time. And I also like to keep it on the left side next to the toolbar and keep adding things over here. And there's another thing that you can improve in terms of shortcuts. So if you look at the top, there's going to be this line of icons and you can go ahead and customize that as well. And depends on how you do it on the computer or the iPad. For example, iPad, you have to hold your finger and then you can delete icons. For example, this little button takes me to tutorials for Eclipse Studio Paint, which I don't really need every time I paint. And that's why I'm just gonna hold and delete. And the same way we added to quick actions, we can add our own stuff over here too. So I like a pen that I really like, I can just drop it in there. And let's say I have a favorite color that I use every single time I sketch uh, every morning then I can save myself colors over here as well. So you can go into this little button and go into command bar settings. And this will allow us to basically add whatever we want into this panel. There's so many options in here that it's just crazy to go over everything. But let's go to drawing color. And I really love, for example, dark red. And I just do add. And there we go. So now I can literally just click that button and I have myself that color in there. Another quick tip that I use all the time now is for iPad, there's no keyboard that I take with me all the time. So brush size palette becomes super useful. And uh, I usually on the computer, you can just use your keyboard to bracket keys and make your brush smaller or bigger. And this is great. But again, I like it with there's many, many options, I can just go ahead and sploosh it. <laughs> so it becomes on the longer side. So anytime you have a, a palette that you want to use, just think about can I make it vertical and long? And is it going to be the same way of use? Uh, so for example, brushes, you can't just squish them because if you go all the way, it's really, really hard to use and understand like which brush you're using. But for a palette like this, this is exactly perfect. This is uh, what it was made for, honestly. So 
think outside of the box and try to figure out what panels can you squish and which panels do we have to stretch. And please don't quote me on those, <laughs> on those words ever. <laughs> There's also a thing that I always change in Clip Studio Paint, even when I use computer. So for example, I draw a really, really small uh, smiley face over here and I really like it, but it's hard for me to find it in the layer panel. Look at, uh, I have three layers. Which one has the smiley face? I wouldn't know. And so that's why if you go into the layer panel and you click the little three lines, and here you can change A, the thumbnail size, so you can go to smallest, or make it really, really huge, so <laughs> large. It's gonna get bigger and bigger anytime you click on it. So largest, that's just gigantic. Um, but the best part in here, I always switch this to uh, show only layer area, which means that it's gonna constrain itself to only show what you actually have drawn. So show only area. Now you can see that this specific layer is just for the smiley face. But if I draw something here, obviously it's gonna change that. So. Uh, it's gonna keep updating as you go. So there's a smiley face here and there's a second smiley face over here and it's trying to see how can you show that like compressed together. And this saves me so much time, especially when I look for like a small tiny detail that I was working on and there's this giant painting and I really need to change <laughs> that layer to something else or rename it. Um, and honestly, this is like a life saver. And the last few tips that I really want to share are like extreme, extreme uh, Tamil thing to do because I really like to save even more space that I can. If you go into a little icon for Clip Studio Paint and go to preferences, there's going to be a bunch of stuff you can change. And one of them is the status bar. So if you click OK, you can see that now on the iPad it's going to show like time, date, your battery, if it's connected to the Wi-Fi, all this other stuff. And I'm like, I really don't need to use this when I draw. And so that's why I go to preferences and I just hide it. Another thing that I can go into is light color or dark color. Obviously, I keep it light for mostly tutorials because it looks nicer, but you can also go to dark and you can adjust the density of how dark or light it's going to be. Uh, so it's just more like cosmetics stuff. Um, there's also edge keyboard. So because iPad doesn't have a keyboard technically, unless you connect one, there's gonna be a little thing that's gonna say view. Uh, I think by default, it's gonna say swipe. So this is how it works uh, default wise. So if you swipe, it's going to show you these little buttons in here, but I'm not really a fan of that. Uh, how to use it, I'll get in that in a moment, but I like to keep it as a button. So now there's going to be a little button here so I can move it to any place I want. And once I click on it, it's going to show me extra buttons that are connected to a real actual keyboard. So Let's say I want to select multiple layers. Um, it's a little tedious on the iPad, but if you hold, let's say shift and just click, click, boom, I just selected all of these and I didn't really have to have <laughs> an actual keyboard connected. And the most important part before you finish this tutorial is how do you actually save this? Uh, you go into window workspace and we can see here that there's gonna be register workspace, register workspace as material and search for a workspace material. So if you click here, you will be taken to Clip Studio Paint uh, website and it's gonna show you uh, different artists made their own workspaces that you can go ahead and like download and try. But if you don't wanna do that, you can save your own. Let's go to workspace, uh, register. And then here you can see the information below will be saved. So that's including shortcuts, command palette layout, preferences, unit settings. So there's a lot more things that get saved up, especially watch out for shortcut settings, because if you change any shortcuts, you will be changing them just for that workspace. It's not gonna be for the entire uh, Clip Studio Paint. And I can just call this my favorite 
space. And once you click OK, we go back to Window, Workspace, and you can see that it's residing right here. And anytime you can like change it, if you like delete half of this stuff, you can just go back to Workspace, reload my favorite space, and it's going to go back to normal. And if you don't want to mess with anything at all, and you, you really want to keep it safe and steady, and you don't want anything to move, uh, in here in the palette dock, you can lock things. So for example, lock palette positions, you can lock their height. So anytime you can do a height, uh, now we can't change the position of the up and down. And if you go back and you go palette position, now I can't even move my color wheel. So if you really are set on your position, you really are sure this is what you want, and you don't want anything to be messed up, there you go. You can go into Window, Palette Dock, and in here you can just lock everything. You don't have to worry about anything else ever again. So I really hope that um, this video was helpful. I, uh, When I was making this, it was like really, really important to me because when I was learning this, nobody told me, and I'm really happy that I found all these like <laughs> secret buttons that nobody else was showing me. Um, I do have a an article for this video as well if you like a written uh, version of this tutorial. But other than that, let me know if you have any questions. I will try to answer them if I can. Thank you so much for watching and happy painting.